me see. Oh, you guys come in. What's up, everybody? All right. So let's see this. So yeah, um, we're in the later part of the course now. So I mean, we've got like maybe three or four days left in this class. So um, this week, I want you guys to focus on finishing out the crate. Uh, I've been looking through your threads uh, lately. I've been looking through your threads and some of you guys uh, were kind of resourceful. Some of you guys weren't. So let me go over. Um, but you know, it was cool. Um, I kind of, I did it on purpose, taking my time to kind of post that video. Uh, of how to finish texturing it just because I wanted to see how resourceful you guys could be and kind of getting that information and stuff like that so um, I was pleasantly surprised that some of you guys actually did attempt to take it in there and, and tried you know it wasn't you know the best but I like the fact that you guys tried and that's the most important part is that you guys are on your own right using the resources that you have right internet exists your peers exist there's previous videos like how are you guys gonna gonna really handle that so uh, that video has been ready to go for a while um, it's just I just wanted to see how you guys would handle it and you know I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised with that so this is a you know this is eventually what you guys are going towards I don't know why my thing is it's not responding but let's see if you guys can see this so this is the final result from uh, the one you guys are going to get to watch. Um, but yeah, so I like the I like what you guys were you know doing. You guys have the right idea, but you weren't able to kind of get the whole thing in there. So this will hopefully fill a lot of those gaps that you guys are uh, were having with that. All right, so let's let's dive into today's topic. All right today we're going to talk about how to monetize your artwork and curate the life that you want. All right. So can everybody see my uh, presentation right now? Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You guys can see tiny little me over here and uh, I just removed that so you guys should be able to see everything now. So let me turn on my pointer. I like this guy. So, let us move Le Professeur all the way over to the corner pocket and lock it and let's begin. All right, so there is nothing impossible to him who will try. That is a quote from Alexander the Great and shout out to, you know, this guy right here. I know you guys dig it. My Christmas sweater in, what are we in, July, August? So... Uh, yeah, so for us as artists, it's important for us to kind of uh, oftentimes step beyond uh, that creative aspect of ourselves to really get into uh, the business side of this stuff. Uh, for a lot of us, it doesn't come easy to be in the business aspect of uh, 3D modeling or being an artist in general. It's been very hard for artists in the past because that's not what our brains are inclined to do. We're not those, we just like, let me create to create. I just wanna create whatever my heart desires and put that stuff out there. And that's usually how uh, artists are. They're very, very like secluded and you know, like, and they don't worry about that monetary uh, value and the monetary costs of creating their art. Uh, for uh, many famous artists, they don't even get paid until they die, right? Like Van Gogh, uh, a lot of these guys don't even sell uh, paintings when when they're alive just because you know uh, they're the business side is such lacking for artists we've never been known to be the greatest of uh, business people there have been some um, business minded great business minded artists out there like Andy Warhol he had a very good eye for business or he had a, he had a knack for business as well as the art side and he was able to kind of uh, parlay the artwork he was doing for this huge gallery showing and he became you know huge and influential in the pop art um, space and he used that very very 
uh, very, very well. So, you know, there you're going to definitely find some exceptions. But for the most part, you know, you've heard of tortured artists, uh, the, the starving artists, right? That's a thing because of how bad historically we've been at the business side of doing things. So in the modern age, what does that mean? What does it mean to be an artist, uh, somebody who is in business and, and, and trying to make money uh, for yourself and survive? Because, you know, uh, if you ain't got money, you can't do nothing right these days. Like if you don't have monetary backing, some some sort of money to do stuff with, your, your, your art career is going to be... Uh, a very short, uh, short-lived. All right, and this is to help kind of try to avoid uh, that starving artist motif that we've painted for ourselves over the years. And this was, you know, part of my journey to financial freedom. And I'm no way, you know, shape near there, but I'm well on my way to kind of building that momentum for. The stuff that I do and I hope to present that to you and, and kind of guide you guys and you guys don't have to literally do every single thing I do you guys can cherry pick and say okay I like to do that or I, you know I like to try that and, and, and do your own thing from there All right so let's so my personal journey let's talk about that so most millionaires have seven streams of income I am on a journey that would lead towards that and I implore you all to do the same financial independence or financial freedom is a term you all should be familiar with it generally means having enough savings investments and cash on hand to afford the lifestyle we want for ourselves and our families and a growing nest egg that will allow us to retire or pursue the career we want without being driven by earning a certain amount each year. How long can you survive? Is usually the question most uh, financial planners will ask you. Uh, they'll ask you, they'll say, hey, uh, if you lost your job today, how long, how many months could you survive on the savings that you currently have in your bank account? And if it's three to six months, you're in okay shape, right? You, you generally want a year or more savings that you can use if you ever lose your job, if you f ever find yourself unemployed or something like that. You want to have a nest egg, something that you can fall back on, right? Uh, reserve money. So my personal, in, uh, my personal journey includes my 3D uh, design and my podcast. I believe we all have a voice and as artists, a responsibility to pave the way for the people who come after us. When we show them what we did and how we did it, we give them a chance to succeed in an ever evolving world. So this talk is about building yourself a funnel to assure your future is bright. And uh, that funnel, I don't know, I feel like one of my friends told me about the funnel. Uh, I think it's JJ Bigley, you guys might have heard of him, he's one of the, but he talks about this art funnel or this funnel, and um, that that's where I kind of got the idea of this funnel. So here is my funnels, my passive income streams, right? Uh, these are things that I've just started recently, like a year or so ago, and uh, to, to give you guys perspective, it takes at least uh, four to five years to get a business up and running and profitable. Uh, so it's going to take a while for all of these to, or even at least one of these to pop off. But I'm well on my way. I'm, I'm building those steps, right, to get there, right? And that's what I want to implore you guys to do is start your journey. The sooner you start your journey to wealth building and financial, uh, financial independence, the sooner you guys will be able to get there. The sooner you guys can retire early, get your family and your parents and uh, people that you love what they want and, and be able to help the people uh, around you. So my income streams include... Uh, these are income producing uh, assets that I own. These are passive income that uh, I don't have to work every single day. No matter what I do, they will still make me some sort of money, even if it's pennies uh, a day. So, And I have an extra one that I didn't include here. So there's cgbackpack.com, uh, Gumroad, Turbo Squid, and my website, which I make money on. So these are things that I make. Uh, I have a 3D website where I make 3D assets and I sell those uh, 3D assets. So uh, let's see if I can. Let's 
So let's escape this. So I have a website, uh, CG Backpack, where I sell uh, 3D assets. I also have a Gumroad, which does the same thing. So I've got three, uh, three or four different websites that I sell. You know, these 3D assets and 3D packs, and um, a lot of the stuff is free. Uh, but I do sell some of the pieces in there. So some of the stuff that I can put into packs, I pack package them up and I sell those as uh, packs that people can download and use. So there's this on Turbo Squid, its own personal page, and a Gumroad, which is all free. So this is something that you guys can do, which is if you guys are good at making assets or whatever you're, you are, uh, you're good at making, right? You can parlay that into something that you can sell, right? You can definitely parlay that into something that you can sell. Uh, ArtStation also allows you to do this. Uh, Patreon uh, it also allows you to do uh, something like that. And there's also uh, uh, my Art of Struggle podcast, and that includes the YouTube channel, um, and the uh, podcast itself. The YouTube channel does not make any revenue right now because I, you know it's like a it's a very niche account. But the podcast actually does because I do get uh, sponsorship on there. So it's not a lot of sponsors, but I get like one or two sponsors that um, that pay me for uh, the plays that I get. So if I get a certain number of plays, they put a couple cents in there and then it grows uh, over time. So here's what my podcast looks like. Uh, you can check it out on Spotify, iTunes, uh, pretty much wherever you would get a podcast, Podbean, uh, Google Podcasts, right? So you can find these. And I talk about video games, movies, uh, like just pretty much the industry that we're in. I talk about that on this podcast um, and you can get that I mean, right now. So the way I make money on this is, yeah, like I said, you know, uh, they'll, they, they, you know, my current balance is $23. This is the total I've earned for, uh, you know, just, uh, one of these sponsored. Usually, um, I have multiple sponsors at a time and you know, that's how it works. You just get money. And this is something that no matter what I do, right. For the next for however long this podcast is going to be on, if somebody comes on here and listens to this podcast again, I still get paid that ad revenue, right? So that's that's another source of income, right? It might not be a million dollars, but man, that's you know money that I didn't have to do anything but talk on the talk on you know like a, a podcast or a show like this, and people will pay for that, right? And that's the same with my. Um, uh, 3D assets. I only make that asset one time and somebody can purchase it multiple, multiple times, right? Different people can purchase that same thing. So I've got recurring uh, possibilities on that. Like if the asset's really good, I can get a hundred people to buy it, right? And there's something called millionaire math that I can kind of show you guys uh, as to how to start thinking like a millionaire so that you're you're at least in that same mindset of, okay, these are the things that I need to do. This is what I need to do to get to that next level, right? So you have yourself some real goals that you can really, uh, really start to get to. All right, so another passive income stream for me is uh, my design firm, right? Where I work for freelance and contract work for different people and that brings me in a really good money. That's where most of my money comes from right now, which is um, that, oh, I also teach, I forget, I'm teaching you guys right now. So uh, that's another uh, stream of income for me, but uh, a good chunk of my um, income comes from the contract design stuff that I do and that's for uh, different companies like HGTV, um, let's see, what other companies have I worked for recently? Uh, a company called Dev House, uh, doing VR stuff. Um, that that's a project that I just wrapped up uh, for these these apartment complexes. So experiential design for different movies. Uh, this was for Folsom. Uh, this was like some doctor stuff. This is like a hospital room. So like I I've done a bunch of different. Um, different work and that's another way that I make money. This is my company's website. You can go here, uh, you can check out the uh, the stuff about us and, and, and see what we really do. So this is another, for me, this is another uh, stream of income for us. So 
for for you guys, I want you guys to start thinking about what you can do to really start monetizing. And I'm trying to give you guys some routes that I'm taking, right? These are my, this is what I'm doing. And you guys can take whatever you want and say, okay, I'll take this, I'll do that, I won't do that. And you even find your own means to make passive income. And you guys should be thinking about that now, right? When I started thinking about this stuff, I felt like, man, if only I knew the way or if somebody had told me this, I would have been doing this a long time ago, right? Think about if you had started a YouTube channel when YouTube first started, right? If you had started a channel when TikTok first started, like right? how much you would be there. So I'm always looking for the emerging technology, what the next thing is, what the next, like what the next YouTube is, what the next Snapchat is. And you should be the first on there because if you, you're the first person on there, you can definitely monetize and get that ground swell from uh, from a, from a kind of uh, the base start of everything, all right. So another for, uh, form of passive income for me is uh, my apps and stuff like that. So I design these watch faces and stuff like that for Galaxy watches, and um, let's see, and that's how I uh, that's a, my that's another passive income stream for me. So like I make these watch faces, they're the same thing like once i make them once i made a bunch of these and like the the cowboys when i made a cowboys watch face it's gotten six thousand downloads um just like this year alone like just you know so this all this stuff i make it one time upload it one time and this is just what i made this month right so this is just another stream of income another little bit of money right this is money th that i don't even I, it's not even part of my personal like this is not like oh okay this is my job or anything i make it one time upload it and people can go and download it and pay me for it over and over and over again so i'm trying to get this into you guys's head right i'm trying to show you guys these are the little things that you guys can do now you guys are a lot younger than me right imagine starting this now you're making four dollars every couple 30 days on this side on this side you're making this on the, you know so you're you're building those streams of income for yourself but you have to work at them right you have to be the one that's doing all this stuff right like you know um you have to have strategies to bring people in right so like one of my strategies is like these cowboys ones i made those free right i made those free of charge you can just download them for free what that does is it brings people in it's going to go whoa free well designed it's animated watch face how can then it brings people in and then people are more willing to pay for uh stuff that you have that are premium like my andy warhol um stuff people are now willing to pay two dollars for something that i it took me literally 30 minutes to make right and four people at two dollars downloaded it well that's eight bucks already right that, that you know so you have to start thinking about how you guys can monetize the stuff that you guys are doing, right? You guys like to watch anime or you like you like to play video games. Wow. How about you start a streaming account where you stream, you get Patreon, like do something, start think this is the future, guys, right? This stuff is all here for you. And you guys need to start getting out there and being the people who are making this stuff happen, right? The world is gonna pass you by if you just keep sitting at home and waiting for things to happen. Right, you have to go out there and actively make that happen for yourself. So, my non-revenue producing income streams are the Art of Struggle YouTube, where which is the stuff that you guys get to watch for free. Uh, you know, I, I teach you guys, but then I also make the premium, the harder stuff, a uh, harder content free as well. Like you know, you'll learn how to do you know effects and and simulations and render in different engines and th things like that. Uh, as extras just because I feel like whenever uh, I was coming up, I didn't have those resources. So I would feel really, really awkward or weird charging people to watch videos uh, of things that tutors and mentors were willing to give to me for free, right? They were willing to teach me this stuff and, and pe my mentors and my friends were willing to teach me all this artwork and I would feel so weird you know charging people to learn the good stuff so to speak right that's that's a weird so i felt like i needed to make that stuff free for people to always be able to come back to watch at any time and use those resources so that's why i make that uh the art of struggle stuff uh kind of free uh i also have a comic book stuff uh comic book 
that I make that I, you know, every once in a while, if I'm feeling inspired to write a story or something, or if I have a story that I want to tell, I'll, I'll make uh, a comic book and put it out there for free. And I'm also getting my real estate license and uh, purchasing real estate. So those are those currently don't make me any money, but in the near future, I hope to kind of turn that around to, to turn them into revenue uh, creating streams of income. So this is just my personal one, right? It's a lot of different stuff, but this has taken me like years just to get all of this stuff started. I started with one, right? Built it up and then I kept it going and then I would build another one, right? So that's how it kind of worked out. So like I started with the the app stuff, like the watch designs before I ever did the podcast stuff, right? Like that stuff was going and then I would do another one and then another one and then another one until I'm like, okay, I'm building these little things up slowly but surely, but you have to have a good foundation to kind of do all this stuff, right? So I don't want to overwhelm all of you, but you know, this is how you guys should be starting. This is the business mind that you guys should be having along with being very creative individuals who can do kick-ass artwork, all right? So let's uh, continue our, uh, our presentation. So what is your art, right? Is it podcast? Uh, so a podcast is uh, an episodic series of spoken word digital audio files that a user can download to a personal device for easy listening. 3D models in 3D uh, computer graphics, 3D modeling is the process of developing a mathematical representation of a surface of an object in three dimensions via specialized software. So I'm saying, what is your art? Your art could be anything. It could be music, clothes, fashion, entertainment, programming, texturing, knitting. It doesn't matter. Are you good at jazzercising, right? Like soul cycling. I don't care what it is. What is your art? What is your thing? Right? What do you do and how uh, can you find out what it is, right? You're here for a reason, right? You know you've got some artistic inclination, right? Figure out what your art is, right? So that's the first step. What is my art? What am I doing, right? My name is Ty. This is me and I am a boom. You fill in the blank for yourself, all right? So then you want to build a brand, right? So what you want is the effect of a ro uh, of rolling a snowball up a snow-covered mountain. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you get to the tippy top of the mountain and gravity brings the snowball down the other side, getting even bigger with little effort from you. The tricky part is getting the steam to push the snowball up the mountain. So it's important, guys, for you to protect your reputation. It's the most valuable thing you own. And when I talk about rolling that snowball up the mountain, what I mean is the work that you're putting in now. You're putting in hard work. You're, go you're grinding every day. You're waking up early, staying in late to push that work out, right? You're working, 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 and you're putting so much stuff out there that over time, all of that work aggregates and build so much momentum for you that with little, like you might have to put out one, you might have to do some monitoring after, but other than a little bit of monitoring, right, you're, you're still making that money and it's doing its own thing. You want to build stuff that sustains itself, that you don't need to go back to every single day, right? You don't have to go back to it like a job every single day. It takes care of itself. It runs itself, right? That's the kind of business I want you guys to start thinking about running. Of course, you can get a job, a nine to five, and work that on the side, but also for your life, for your future, when something like a pandemic happens, right, you still have some sort of income. You still have some something that'll get you a couple dollars. Hey, it'll buy you some ramen, right? It'll buy you some water for the week, right? You're an artist, right? You don't want to go hungry. You don't want to and not have food in the pantry. You don't want to, you know, miss your payment, right? That extra $200 from those 3D assets that you threw up, hey, that might save you. That might grab you till the next week. But you've already done that hard work in the past, so you can reap those rewards. But if you don't start now, you're not going to reap those rewards, right? Work hard now, guys. Work your asses off and work smart. Don't just work hard. Work smart. So curate your own persona. Be yourself. There's so many clones out here today. There's so many. Everybody wants to be everybody else, right? There's so many clones. 
curate your own persona, curate your own personality, be you. It's, it's all good to be you, right? If you're weird, embrace that. Embrace your weirdness. Do you like to wear Christmas sweaters and Christmas hats in, in the middle of July? Then that's you. Do your thing. It's cool, right? And then stay on brand. If your brand is PG, PC stuff, then stay on brand. Don't try to be more edgy than you are, right? And if your stuff is edgier, then don't try to be more PC or passive than you really are. Be who you are, right? People like authenticity. People love that about you, right? If they're going to like you, they're going to like you regardless of if you pretend to be somebody else, right? So, and also be predictable. This sounds like a, a very counter uh counterintuitive thing in the, in the sense of like be predictable why would i want to be predictable i want to be spicy i want to be you know innovative right be predictable in the sense that if you say you're going to do something do what you say you're going to do if you say hey guys i'm making these videos and i'm going to post this video um tuesday then post that video on tuesday right because your audience has come to expect a certain thing and if they don't know what to expect they're only going to last so long right be predictable if you say i'm going to do one every single week well then have one queued up every single week right build that audience build that brand loyalty by being predictable don't be predictable in the sense that you're boring be predictable in the sense that you're a reliable individual, you're a reliable person. If you say you're gonna do your homework, you've done your homework. If you say you're gonna post this, you've posted it, right? Be reliable, all right? So, identify your market. So who can use what you have? These are questions that you guys should be thinking about. So is it businesses, is it people, is it children, is it anime lovers, is it men, is it women, right? Who, what is your demographic? What is the, what is, uh, what kind of people can use what you're doing? And then what is their age range, right? Is it people under 12 years old? Is it 12 to 17, right? Is it 18 to 24? Find that age range that your, 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 your market is in and you want to target those markets. And then you want to know where they reside or where do they hang out. Right, that could be anywhere, right? When I say where is their residence, I don't mean like where is their physical house located. No, that's that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what region they're in. Are they uh, are they in California, Mexico, U.S., Africa, or do they hang out in places like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Reddit? Like, where do they hang out? Where do where are your customers aggregating? Where are they collecting so that you can go and find them, or they can find you? Right? Where do you need to put your stuff on? Right. If you're an artist who paints characters, would you put your stuff on a stuff that that you know that paints tractor trailers? You know, you you want to put it where your people are gonna be, where the people are gonna be most receptive to your message. All right. So the next thing for you to do is make a plan. How will you get in touch with them? How will you get to your customer? Will it be through email? Will it be through social media? Uh, will it be through networking uh, when there isn't a pandemic, obviously? Uh, where are your people? How will you get in touch with them? Well, how will you deliver on your promise, right? Will it be through email? Will it be through mail, UPS, FedEx, Dropbox? Will it be you through, through uploading YouTube? How will you be saying, this is what you've paid for? This is what you've gotten. This is the plan that you need to make, right? So... Figure all that stuff out and then execute. Do what you said you will do. Don't fail to communicate. Discipline yourself. And then slow and steady wins the race. All right? These are very, very simple idioms that people say and, and, and things like that. But it's very important because, like I said before, when you do what you say you're going to do, people can trust that you're going to be there when they come for you. People can trust that, okay, well, he said he's gonna do this, then I know he did it, right? So don't fail to communicate either. Uh, it's important to always 
hey guys, this is the reason I wasn't able to do this. This is the reason I, I, I thought I was going to do this, right? Communicate, tell people what you're going to do so that even if when you don't come through, right, they have an explanation for, oh, okay, this is what's going on because you communicate with them and you tell them how you're feeling, what's going on. And remember to discipline yourself, right? The thing that, uh, that, that differentiates, um, people who succeed and are successful with their goals and people who don't is uh, that when that passion, that original passion that you get for the task or the goal fades, discipline is what's going to take you uh, to success. Discipline is what's going to take you to that next level. So discipline yourself, right? And our, remember, slow and steady wins the race, right? Uh, nothing in life worth having ever comes easy. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Nothing uh, worth having in this life will ever come easy. If it comes easy, you realize that people don't value it as much. Uh, people take it for granted, right? Uh, hence, trust fund babies, right? Uh, they, you know, if you have a silver spoon in all your mouth, you don't know the value of a dollar, right? So there, there's, there's things like that that you guys need to start just taking into account. You guys are adults now, and, and people should start treating you as such. And, and as adults, I believe that you guys uh, should have control of your future, know all the possibilities, know everything that's, that's out there for you. All right, and, and you guys, uh, this is one of the biggest things that's kind of held me back as well, right? Because, you know, I'm an artist and, you know, very sensitive artists, you know, so, and you have a lot of fears, right? Uh, so there's the fear of missing out. That's known as FOMO. I don't know if you guys ever heard of FOMO before, but FOMO is the fear of missing out on something. Uh, there's also the fear of failure. There's the fear of success. There's imposter syndrome. Uh, there's the overwhelming fear where it just feels like there's just too much going on. And then there's also a fear of starting. And these aren't all the possible fears. I know that. But these are just some prevalent ones that I've noticed with people who consider themselves like entrepreneurs or people who are very goal-oriented people. So... Here's some solutions to some of these fears. So you have to remember that there's nothing to fear except fear itself. All right, there's nothing to fear except uh, fear itself. I, want, I know a president said that. I want to say it's uh, FDR. Maybe it's JFK. Woodrow Wilson. I don't know. One of those presidents said it. Um, but take it one step at a time. Right, One step at a time. Right. If you have a, a journey of a thousand miles, it begins with a single step. Right. Just do it a little bit at a time. You've got all these steps to do. Break it down into the smallest possible piece. Break it down into the literally the smallest possible task you can do. You're finding it hard to draw. Right. Get a pencil. What task? Task one. Was it that hard to get a pencil? No. Get a piece of paper. Whoop, I got a pencil and a piece of paper. Was it that hard to do both? Right? Make a line on the paper. That's not that hard, right? You're starting small, taking it one step at a time. And you have to always remind yourself that everybody, even the best of the best, have to start from somewhere. They have to, everybody was once trash at what they wanted to do. The best skateboarders weren't always the best skateboarders. The best uh, basketball players weren't always the best basketball players. At one point in time, LeBron wasn't uh, LeBron, right? He was just a regular person playing basketball, and then he practiced and practiced. I mean, sometimes it doesn't look like that guy practices, but man, he's really good. Um, so it takes practice to make perfect, right? And everyone has to start from somewhere. So, and the last solution would be to keep it simple, stupid. This is that that kiss analogy, which is just keep just keep it simple. Don't try to overcomplicate things. Don't try to put in more steps than need to be. Just do the basics. Just do the, the you know just get it out there. Keep your keep your ideas, keep your executions simple. That way, it's easy for you to retrace the steps and go back and and fix something because you've kept it simple the whole way through and it's easier it's more transparent to understand people will understand it because it's a simple idea a simple method uh, all right so keep it simple stupid so when it comes to building an audience 
right? Um, it's always remember. It's always good to remember that being kind never hurt anyone. So being a good person, right? It has never hurt anybody. I'm not, not to today. Nobody's ever said, "Man, I was nice to that guy, and that was the worst." You know, like I, oof, I'm I'm in pain because I was nice to that guy. That's not how. That's not how it works, right? It just. It's important to be kind to people because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what circumstances in their life has led them to this point. You don't know what they might be having because everybody has a different burden. And it's something that I try to keep in mind when I'm, I'm trying to approach anybody or, you know, somebody's doing something that I don't like. And I'm like, you know, I don't know what they might have had in their day to, you know, to have such rotten uh, such rotten luck or such a rotten attitude, but you know, I'm not going to contribute to it or I'm not going to partake in that. And I'm just going to try to be as kind as I possibly can throughout the entire thing. All right. So connect to people on a personal level, connect to, to your audience on a personal level. Don't just, you know, people comment on your stuff and you just like, all right, whatever. I got a comment. Cool. Peace, peace. Thank them. Appreciate that. They spent their time. They took their time out of their day to give you a compliment or to say something or to critique you or to give you a comment, right? Engage with your audience. Give shit away. Nobody has ever complained about free shit. Ain't nobody ever been like, oh man, that was free. That's the worst thing ever. No. If it's free, people are going to take it. People are going to look at it. People are going to use it. Give shit away. Just, just give it away. Never stop caring. Right? Never stop caring about your fellow man. Never stop caring about your work. Never stop caring. Because when we care, we do better. Right? When we care, we do better. Regularly add compelling content, not just a couple of times per month. So always have something to add to the conversation. Don't just be a taker all the time, right? Try to push the bounds. Try to try to be try to be edgy, right? Add compelling content to the conversation. Don't just be, "Oh, okay, thank you for, you know, don't just be begging with your hand out all the time. Contribute." Right? Nurture and grow your audience. If you see that somebody, you know, is a that that wants to do what you want to do, they're asking questions. Hey, let me show you what I did. Let me let me let me let me send you to somebody. Let me let me show you a tutorial. Right? Nurture and grow with your audience. Don't just be one of those overlord and you're just like, "Oh, I'm this big bad YouTuber. I'm this big bad, you know." No, like engage with people. It's 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 part of it's part of being human. It's going to make people relate to you more, right? And engage through storytelling. We love stories as human beings. Like that's one of our, our oldest forms of narration. Our oldest form of passing our history down uh, to people is, is narration and, and telling stories. So, so give people a good story. Trust me, they will love it. They'll eat it up and they'll always come back for more. Stay topical, right? Right now, the most important thing on everybody's mind is the pandemic, right? Stay topical, right? If you're making artwork, I mean, maybe throw one way where you do a COVID molecule, right? Stay topical. Stay on what, you know, social justice is really powerful right now. How are you adding to the topic? How are you being a part of the conversation, right? And not just leeching off of it and just posting just to post, right? You're not just using it to, you know, just, just, just get out there and engage, right? Another thing that we underestimate as artists personally is advertising right advertising is something that we need to do if nobody knows you have a product ain't nobody buying your product you got to tell people about your product you've got to tell people about your product if nobody knows that you got a course for sale on patreon nobody's buying your course for patreon if nobody knows that you you knitted all these stuff that you put on then nobody's buying it. So get the word out, right? Facebook makes ad sales easier. Instagram makes ad sales. They'll help you target your audience, right? So start budgeting. Even if it's $10, $20 that you're budgeting towards your advertising, budget something. If it's, okay, I'm going to go buy flyers. I'm going to put it out in this place. 
budget for advertising. Trust me, trust me, trust me. It always helps. All right. So always listen to podcasts. Not my podcast necessarily, but listen to podcasts because there's people who are just giving out the game for free. People are letting you know what's going on, how to monetize, where to put your stuff, right? There's free game out there and it's up to y'all to go out there and fetch that information. And a good way to do that is listening to podcasts, watching podcasts and watching uh, different videos and, and reading different books and things like that. All right. So here are some books and people to study. Here are some good people that I recommend. Uh, so there is Crushing It by Gary V, and then there's Crush It by Gary V. These, this, these guys, hopefully you guys have heard of Gary V, but he's like a motivational guy. He started a wine company. Uh, he was one of the first guys to do like a review show uh, of wine on YouTube. Really good stuff. Um, and then just built it there. Now he owns like a bunch of different companies, owns part of the Jets, I believe. Uh, I mean, it, it's a really remarkable story. So definitely check out Gary V. Uh, the Art of War by Sun Tzu. Um, not for anything other than understanding how to carry yourself in a world that can be not as friendly and uh, can be a little harsher, right? For those, for people who want to kind of toughen their resolve, I would res I would definitely recommend The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And the last book I'm going to uh, recommend is How to Influence People and Make Friends, uh, the audiobook by Dale Carnegie. Uh, it's available on YouTube for free. You guys can listen to it, but these are some books that I, I recommend for you guys to, to definitely check out and some authors that I want you guys to uh, check out. So that's going to be pretty much it for the talk, but I just wanted to you know give you guys an idea of some of the things that you guys can really do to monetize the stuff that you guys are working on and, and really start to make uh, make a change and make a change in your life for the better, right? Because you guys have this opportunity on your hand. You guys are in a generation where we are, um, we're making a change in our society right now. Like there's a huge change uh, coming, right? With the COVID and how we're going to have to live our lives from now on. There's a lot of changes coming and you guys have the opportunity, right? You're at home right now to research and figure out what the next big thing is, right? The other day, it seems like TikTok is getting banned, right? Like TikTok is, might be banned by September 5th of this year. What's the next big thing? What's the next TikTok? What's the next Snapchat? What app is going to make that wave or make that boom? You guys need to find it out and be on there before everybody else so that you guys can sweep up and grab up that market share. If you're putting out content regularly on whatever the new TikTok is, you're gonna definitely, definitely be at the top of your game. So always be innovating, always be thinking of what the next step is, right? Uh, think about how you can crush it, how you can continue to crush it, check out these books. Uh, the, you know, that's, that's pretty much it for the lecture. I wanna thank you guys again. This class has been really good. You guys have really uh, showed out and, and put, a, a put, you know, put a really good effort into a lot of the work. And uh, I really believe that you guys can, can really do some amazing, amazing uh, things. Uh, I will definitely post this on YouTube for you guys to check out. Uh, don't forget to watch the whole video again if you missed anything or if you wanted to check out any of the sites that I'm talking about. I'll definitely post a link to a lot of that stuff uh, at the bottom. Now I'm going to go to some questions or comments that anybody may have.